Ruling estimates of volatility or backward looking. They tell you what volatility has been in the past. Optimal investing requires to be forward looking. You can do that by using Gartz models to predict the volatility of the future return. These models were invented by Nobel Prize winner Robert Engel and his student Tim Bolleslev. In the next slides, you will learn the notation needed to understand a Gartz model. A Gartz analysis starts with a time series of returns. Each return is observed at a regular frequency, like daily or weekly. Assume that at time t minus 1, you want to predict the next return, rt. For this, you can use the information set consisting of all the past and current returns available at time t minus 1. Based on the information set, you can then compute the expected return. This is the mean prediction denoted by mu t. The prediction is of course not perfect. There is the prediction error, et, equal to the difference between the actual return and the predicted return. Based on the information at time t minus 1, you can also predict the variance. The predicted variance equals the expected square deviation of the return from the mean. Its square root is the volatility. To make those predictions in practice, you need an equation to replace the expectation in the formula. For the mean, you can take the rolling average of the past m returns. Or you can use a time series model, like ARMA. For the variance, you can take the average of the m most recently observed squared prediction errors. Note that you then give the same weight to all m observations, irrespective of when they have been observed. Since the future variance is more affected by the more recent events than by the distant ones, you can achieve a higher forecasting accuracy by giving more weight to the most recent observations. This leads to the arch equation in which the predicted variance equals a constant omega plus a weighted sum of the p most recently observed square prediction errors. In practice, most researchers don't use ARCH. They use the Gartz 1 1 model. They set p equal to 1 and use also the previous variance prediction to obtain the next one. You can see that under the Gartz 1 1 model, the predicted variance equals the parameter omega plus the parameter alpha multiplying the previous squared prediction error plus the parameter beta multiplying the previous variance prediction. You further need two types of parameter restrictions. First, the omega, alpha and beta should be positive such that the gauge variance is always positive. Second, the sum of alpha and beta has to be less than 1 such that after a shock the gauge variance always returns to its long run value. The variance is then mean reverting with long run variance equal to the ratio between omega and 1 minus alpha minus beta. To get some intuition, you see here an R script that computes the gauge variance for the daily S&P 500 returns. The alpha parameter multiplying the squared error is set to 0.1. The beta parameter multiplying the previous variance prediction is set to 0.8. The value of omega is such that the long run variance equals the sample variance. The prediction errors E are defined as returns minus their mean. Since the gauge process is recursive, you need a loop to compute the next variance based on the previous variance. The first variance is set to the sample variance. The next ones follow from the gauge equation. Note that the predicted volatility is defined as the square root of the gauge variance. The script ends with comparing the predicted and unconditional volatility in a time series plot. You can see that the volatility of the S&P 500 is mean reverting. Periods of above average volatility 
or followed by periods of below average volatility. Please go ahead and program your first Gartsch 